Uh, Garrett, we got to get to some insider buying with you while while Kenny architects away. Let's take it off by covering yeah. why it's beneficial to trade insider buying. I mean, it sounds so fruitful, but give us the score. <laughs> Well, I mean, if you watched Midday Momentum and you watched Tim Melvin and I talk about this for three three days and or, or three, uh, two years and you uh, still didn't turn it off, you know that it's a really good opportunity for you to make money by you know, joining the people who are putting their own money down, who are executives at the company and must file a SEC Form 4 document, effectively saying that they are buying their stock because they anticipate that it is going to move higher. Now, sometimes we're going to talk about some different tri uh, different names that were uh, played over the last couple of days. We've had about 10 names in the last 10 days where the bets by CEOs and CFOs have been over a million dollars. CEO, nobody knows the business better and the trends within the organization. Nobody knows the balance sheet better than the CFO. Obviously, mm -hmm. they have a pretty good understanding of what the share value should be. But that doesn't mean that there aren't outside influences in the short term that can drag their stock lower. They put money, their own money, taking it out of a bank account and putting it on the table. Yeah, that is skin in the game. And you have some favorites uh, that have been hitting recently. Let's start with your first GM, which you see. Well, they're not they're not favorites. It's just that they really jumped out at me. And I think that they have compelling stories. And we want to talk a little bit about each one. So we had the CFO of GM laid, laid down about a million dollars on uh, his stock, uh, which was interesting because this was the first sizable buy in GM in about a year and a half, uh, about maybe a year going back to May of 2022. So again, it's a CFO. You look at this company and I was talking to Tim about this before the show even began as we were talking about these very names that we're going to discuss right now. GM is trading at a level right now that is comparable to what effectively Kore South Korean steel makers trade at in terms of their book value. And the reason is, well, a lot of people don't want to invest in South Korea where there's an, a crazy man to the north with nuclear bombs. But GM uh, currently trading at about $33. Fair value, Guru Focus, some other places. You know, you're seeing up and around that $50 range. You're seeing price targets up around $50 as well, $45. So it creates an interesting uh, situation here where... GM for the long term, I, I I have a thesis. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's right, but I think that when we start to spend a significant amount of subsidization around green energy and green EVs, we have just historically seen Washington favor the U.S. auto unions, particularly um, both Ford and General Motors. So right now, looking at this price, there are, it's not necessarily something that I want to buy. But it is something that I would be interested in trading. And we're going to be talking about that today at Flashpoint because this is something that I would buy at a lower price, not necessarily right here, because obviously there are concerns about the state of the economy. Oh. But this does look interesting at this level to see the CFO putting down a million dollars of his own money. And there are a few strategies that Garrett takes advantage of in Flashpoint to get in at a lower price. Well, I know you're going to leave that for your members. Yes. You have. You have another one that got your interest, ORCC, by the yeah, CEO. Yeah, this is this is this is Oak Tree. This is a uh, BDC, and this is a this is a this is a Thanksgiving with Tim stock oh, right man. now, right? Where, who, what is BDC? Alternative income, ten percent dividend, million dollar buy, buying back stock. Once again. You know, we've talked about pre. We've talked about other BDCs when he was on. We've talked about uh, a ARCC. We've talked about some of these other names that are trading at certain levels. This is trading at a discount to its net asset value, and it's something to leg in on uh, over the long term. So, ten percent dividend. It, it's interesting to see this kind of come in with this buy. We hadn't seen a buy on ORCC uh, of this size in a while. Uh, once again, more of just kind of a buy and hold and buy more and hold it and buy more and hold it. It's going to be, you know, this is a multi-year type of, uh, a, a type of uh, uh, investment. Love it to Melvin and Garrett Baldwin pick that yeah. smells like sweet potatoes and a nice turkey. All right. Yes. We got one more Garrett laser. Pew, pew. Oh my okay, God. So I just this is, yeah, you shouldn't have done that. Um, so this is, um, 
this is interesting. This is Luminar. This is a Ladar company, and you know maybe he's playing the AI pick. But twenty one million dollars in shares have been purchased by the CEO over the last uh, two weeks. And what's interesting about this? This stock trades at fifty two times sales. This company is barely profitable. This is one of those kind of zombie names, right? But this yeah. is a big bet, a twenty one million dollar bet, and. Simple way to put it is he's probably just gaming his tape a little bit. Some people who read read some commentary that I wrote about it just said no way. And one of the reasons why I would dismiss this. Now, if you want to put this stock in a long-term venture capital style portfolio where you don't look at it for 10 years, but you're willing to, you know, let it go, uh, if it if it if it bombs out, or if you know, suddenly this company's taken over or suddenly it grows into its valuation. But the, co- the CEO uh, reportedly just bought a massive financial publication for like $86 million. So when you're throwing around $86 million on financial publications, $21 million in your company isn't exactly a, a, a significant bet. So to see this right now, um, I'm, I'm steering clear of it, but he bought it at about 586. Stocks moved up to about seven. There might be some additional momentum here, but I still would advise, you know, from a, from a perspective of LACR, you need to look way out into the future simply because this stock is still at nosebleed levels in terms of its valuation. I think it's 52 mm-hmm. times sales. And remember, Sun Microsystems CEO back after the dot com bubble was warning about. 10 times sales and how insane that was. So be very careful with these types of names. You can trade them on momentum, but when momentum goes negative, and it will again later this year, this is a stock that could break down just as quickly as it has broken out since the insider buying began. Well, you know what pairs really well with uh, insider buying, Garrett? Volume profile. Yes, you got it. (laughs) And you get a trade. Okay, right, so cool. so what 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 fascinates me about all three of these ORCC? This one sticks out because it's a ten percent dividend. Gonna... You got to be careful there. I mean, this is a BDC. This isn't something that you, you 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 swing trade. You buy it, you hold it, and you don't look at it. Yeah. So listen to this, Garrett. Listen, listen. Okay. So there's been a lot of stocks that have been breaking out of their volume profile. And okay. this is right there, ready to break out. It's a steady breakout. This is an insane name. And that's what that's what made me most excited because you were looking at this as a long as a long term hold. So we mm-hmm. have a break over the point of control. Looks like we're about to break out of the value area. You have your you have your point of control and moving averages all supporting underneath. So even as a between a swing trader and a long term holder. I, I like this stock. This one sticks out to me the most uh, with uh, VP wise, and I do agree with you. There, GM could see a little bit of of some uh, downside in the longer run, and I don't really have anything on LAZR because this. I'm gonna pull up, pull a CJ and say yeah. this could be like a BB in a box car sometimes, right? 100%. So this stock has yep. a mind of its own. Yeah, I mean one of the one of the challenges with within ORCC, aside from the fact that there's like very little of an option chain. This is what's compelling about the buying was that it was done at 52 week highs. Um, this stock was down, it was down around, nine, the BDC was down around nine in October, I believe, maybe December. So they're buying into strength and that you should be very bullish on that. And one of the other things I always state about you know, trying to option, tra- option trade something like this, it's not, it's not really worth it unless you know, you're buying a call uh, ahead of maybe the first dividend payment, but you don't want to own long-term calls on this or leaps or something like that. You want to buy it, hold it, dividend reinvest it, seven, eight year kind of a private equity mindset, you know, as as uh, Tim and I have discussed in the past. So cool. So cool. All right. So how can we keep up with insider buys and trade them with you on any holiday? We track it every morning. We track it every morning at Flashpoint. We talked a little bit about it today at Postcards, and we will continue to be looking for trades. Remember, when an insider buys at a certain level with a big, uh, big amount of cash, they're setting a floor. They're they're drawing a line in the sand. So the best that you can do is to sell below that, like we have done with Warren Buffett over and over again. We'll be looking at GM today. Awesome, Garrett. All right, join Garrett in Flashpoint and sign up for Postcards. It's it, it's the be- it's the best financial newsletter you're going to get. I'm going to hands down betting my hair on it. That's a big deal.